random disclaimer. Hey. That's just how I feel. What is up, Voodoo Tribe? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Naja, aka The Voodoo Child, and this is a pop culture rant where I pretty much just rant and ramble about current events and things that I like. For starters, thank you guys so much for supporting the last mega rant. If you want something super long and like filled with Diddy, <laughs> go and check that video out. Today I am gonna bring up Diddy. I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna go as in depth as I did in my last videos. It's okay, y'all. I, I, I'm diddied out too. Like y'all just need to lock him up, throw away the key. Like make sure you guys get your water, your wine, your Capri Sun. I'm dry today. <laughs> y'all know I could talk for days. Let's get into the video. Man, while I was editing this video, I saw the news about Liam from One Direction. Like former One Directioner Liam Payne has died at the age of 31. Reports out of Argentina say he was found dead at a hotel in Buenos Aires after falling from the third floor. It's unclear if it was intentional or accidental. Police say someone there reported an aggressive man who may have been under the influence. Good morning, everybody. The star just posted these Snapchats from his time there, and fans were worried when he seemed drunk at the airport. <laughs> That's him two weeks ago at former bandmate Niall Horn's show in Argentina. Liam got a ton of hate from Niall fans saying he was trying to make it about himself. <laughs> After the news of Liam Payne's death, fans in Argentina gathered at Casa Sur Hotel, sang his songs, and laid out flowers as a memorial to the global star. And a day later, fans are still reeling. We spoke with one woman in L.A. who grew up listening to the band. I didn't believe it. I was very shocked. Um, I had to look through multiple sources just to confirm that it's true. Psychiatrist Dr. Evita Limon Rocha wants people to know that feeling sad is perfectly normal. She says even though we may not know the person, it's the music that connects it. Quote, we're completely devastated by the news of Liam's passing. In time and when everyone is able to, there will be more to say. For now, our thoughts are with his family, his friends, and the fans who loved him alongside us. I personally was not a One Direction stan, but being in high school in the 2010s, this is just shocking. Like, this is so shocking to me. And I know a lot of other people that are in my age group because... That fandom was insane. The One Direction fan fiction, the One Direction, uh, it, like it's, I don't know. This is just wild. And he was so young. He was so young. Like there's no reason. I don't know. They're talking about there's an investigation. From what it's been described so far, it seems like he maybe just lost his footing and fell. But this is this is just insanely sad. I was just watching the Mila Tequila. Um, um, if you like pop culture and you're here, I know you know who that channel is. They do they do great great work. Um, I I just saw that they dropped a One Direction video and it was just so good. And man, this is just sad. Meanwhile, there are troubling new details surrounding his death. A preliminary autopsy report reveals the singer died from multiple traumas and internal and external bleeding. Photos shared with ABC News by UK news outlet ITN appear to show drug paraphernalia and a smashed TV inside Payne's hotel room. Plus, in a 911 call, a hotel manager calls for help, saying there's a guest who's drunk on drugs and alcohol, breaking everything in the room. And he says he's fearing for the guest's life because of the balcony. So now that more time has passed, we know that he was in a an inebriated state and either jumped or he could have fell on because the only reason why I said maybe jump is because he punched the TV. Um, the hotel manager said he was being belligerent um, and called 911 before he even jumped. Then the freaking photos of the the paraphernalia like that was so disturbing. It was given Whitney like that. Oh, and TMZ, you're sick. You're sick. Sick, 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 sick. Because speaking of Whitney, they did him the same way they did Whitney. They posted not just the paraphernalia photos, but like photos of this man's body. Like, oh my gosh, this is just so messed up. Oh, I just feel so bad. Like, you just know bro was hurting in those last moments, man. Like, Please check on your people. Like, this is just so sad. With our short Diddy update, okay? So for one, like I said, they need to just, they need to just go ahead and keep him locked up. He keeps trying to get out and they keep denying his bail. This go around though, they set a trial date and it is May of 2025. Well, we now know Diddy's trial date is set for May 5th of next year. He's doing fine. He's making an adjustment. He had his family here today to support him. 
We really want to put an end to all of the clowning that we see on the Internet. This is a serious proceeding with serious consequences. So comes legal team speaking outside the federal courthouse in New York City today. The judge also set deadlines for lawyers on each side of the, of the aisle, really, to submit arguments that will establish boundaries for the trial. Now, just two days ago, Combs' attorneys pushed again for him to be released on bail. Two judges have concluded that the 54-year-old is a danger to the community and also a flight risk. And then late yesterday, the rapper's legal team filed a motion alleging the feds leaked evidence to the media, specifically a graphic hotel surveillance video right here of Combs beating his then-girlfriend Cassie Ventura in a hallway. Now, it's unclear how that video surfaced, but prosecutors have denied leaking the security tape. Meanwhile, the feds also revealed today that they are working to extract data from 100 electronic devices seized from raids at Combs, California and Miami homes. So for one, I just like that they're giving him fair treatment as they would give anybody else in that situation. Um, and when I mean anybody else, I mean like anybody that's into trafficking, abuse, or situations like that, right? People of his stature go unrecognized for a reason. We are a capitalist nation. Capital makes our world go round. So if you have the most capital, you get away with more stuff, right? I know it's really sad to see his kids upset, especially the two girls that are in the foster situation. Well, they're being fostered. So by um, a family friend or the twins are, I should say. It's pretty sad. Sean Diddy Combs' twin daughters, Delilah and Jessie, are being cared for by Lawanda Lala Lane, a close friend of their late mother, Kim Porter. As Diddy faces legal challenges, Lala has provided stability for the 17-year-olds in Los Angeles, ensuring they focus on school and normalcy. But the two, uh, the boys, I remember the boys are have also been named, so I, I will empathize for them that their father is locked up, but we still don't know how involved they are, right? Empathizers, though, like straight on Diddy, empathizers coming out the woodworks. Lil Bow Wow being one of them, so freaking random, especially because he was a child star himself and probably saw some stuff. So just very interesting. Uh, out of nowhere, haven't heard from Bow Wow in forever. And you come out in defense of Diddy. And he's not really saying I defend Diddy. It's more like I support what he did when he was on top. And that was what we all strive for was to be in a Diddy's presence type shit. You know, his name without I see it like this. Like, nah, nah. He's like the gatekeeper to the game. To the point to where, what, what weekend just passed? Like BT or what weekend? It's, it didn't, like the past two, they just didn't feel right. Cause there was no motion, there was no parties. There was nowhere to go. Like for me thinking on it, bro, supposed to be on a 250 foot yacht with his wife, leg up, chilling. This how you ride it out, you know what I mean? And I think a lot of us probably never thought that we would see this, but for me, it's like, it's just, it's just unreal. He was just such a gatekeeper for him. The, the, the liquor in the, the clubs, the, the, the mo like he was everything hip hop. You know what I mean? So for that to, to die out, it's like, you just would have never thought. And especially when you look at somebody as like somebody you study, somebody you idolize. The rapper also makes sure to clarify that he is separating Combs' contribution to the hip hop community from the allegations against him, saying- And, and once again, I'm separating, right? I'm talking about him as the, the, the artist, the, the person, yeah. right? In the same breath though, you have people that were defending Diddy last week that um, no longer do. <laughs> like, and Ray J being one of them, pulling some really interesting antics starting like a little web series talking about the truth and all this stuff like a lot of people out here taking from people not only like like people are people are getting robbed of not only their money and their spirituality they're getting robbed of their womanhood and manhood asses are being taken in ways that nobody can explain do you chuckle do you laugh do you help do you criticize because I see a lot of jokes out there right now talking about baby oil. Everybody got a joke about having baby oil and lube. Is that okay? Is that the message? <laughs> that was funny, fam. Now what? I don't use baby oil. I'm sorry. He's talking about did you cackle? Did you laugh? Yes. Yes, I did. I did. Because this is fucking ridiculous. Like, we're not about to play with you, Ray J. You're over here clowning and being satirical. Like, you're not pulling anybody. Speaking on people, you know, switching up and shit, you even got, uh, I'm not gonna get too, too, too into this, um, but you even got Kanye ass getting sued for allegedly doing something to his assistant at a Diddy party. Uh, coincidentally, 
I've also seen around this time, this information coming out, I've seen Julia Fox come out and again, reinstate that she was not in a good space being in a relationship with Kanye. Kanye was not a good partner. It was abusive, low key, like not abusive, but just like he was negging. And I said this in my uh, book review when I read down the rabbit hole that Kanye was like negging her and doing stuff like, oh, you look really fire, like you're a bad bitch, but you should get a boob job. Oh, and on top of it, you should let me pay for it. Like, just like backhanded ass compliments or like, oh, I really like your friends, I'm gonna hire all of them. And then like a week later, your friends are really annoying and they're around way too much. Just, you know, like I'm not gonna deny Julia's experience, but I'm also not gonna deny that she said she went to that damn party and she, her and her um, entourage went to the Diddy party, girl. He, she said it was a great Gatsby S party. People wanted to argue me up and down on TikTok. No, ma'am, read the book insert passage. I regret that relationship so much. I hate it. It was only a few weeks, but enough to last me a lifetime. I was in probably the most uncomfortable position in my life, and that's saying a lot. I don't want to be known for being anyone's girlfriend. It wasn't my idea for it to go public. If anything, I was like, we should wait, and then boom, it was done behind my back. I realized pretty quickly I was being used as a pawn. A friend of a friend was like, hey, I got this rapper that wants to get to know you, blase, blase. I wanted to fly her out to Miami and they flew to Miami and they met up and went to a Diddy party. She didn't say Diddy party, but she said it was like a great Gatsby party thrown by a rapper. I wonder who that could be. It was Diddy. There's nobody else. Ask Bow Wow. Didn't Bow Wow just say that? He brings the party. There's nobody else in Miami that fits that repertoire or has been fitting it for as long as Diddy has. So yeah, that's, I'm not gonna go in too much cause I have seen more stuff, but I'm gonna keep it real brief. Cause I know a lot of the stuff that I'm about to talk about in this video could be considered like old news. If you're somebody that like clicked on my video for news, please don't. I'm just here saying my opinion on shit y'all probably already know about. I'm just saying my opinion. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to get that out the way cause that's actually recent as I am posting this, uh, where some of the things I'm about to talk about I probably, you know, were like news like two weeks ago, girl. But for all y'all, you know, that be in the comments like, girl, I never even heard about this until you talked about it, girl. I feel you. We be having lives, okay? I get you, okay? This is just a little, a little key, right? So now we are going to talk about everyone's favorite internet couple, Hallie and DDG. Now, I'm not going to go that far back to where I'm going to talk about the breakup and everything. I just want to talk about how DDG has been handling uh, the separation on social media since he brought it to social media, okay? And that's for any of the DDG fans that are getting ready to come up in here, acting like I'm over here wishing on this black man down, fall shout, like he brings all his business on here. So for one, we're going to talk about these um, live streams. Yeah, about to go so far. I don't know, she said, if she walk over here, if you said my stream, she couldn't walk over here. She said she told you to get off. You said what? She told you to get off. She said she couldn't walk over here. He said, you better be my stream. I just told you to get off. She said she coming. Ah. Uh, T.I.B. I wasn't even supposed to get on stream today, y'all. Uh. Damn. She coming. She coming. What am I supposed to do? I think he off. <laughs> you want me to get up? I mean, you're still on. We gotta go get some food. Okay. I'm about to get up. Okay. Do videos all day and your girl get an attitude when you're doing your last video like that. When you gonna take me to eat? Yeah. When you gonna take me to the movies? When we gonna go on a date? And then it causes relationship problems in your real life that can affect your content. You might get mad in the argument. You might not yeah. want to film next day. Might not want to stream the next day. Not dating anyone. I don't have a potential girlfriend, nor do I even think about that whatsoever. I don't plan on getting into another relationship at all, unless it's Hallie. That's the only way. I am not finna get a new girlfriend. I don't have the desire. I don't want multiple baby mamas. I don't want none of it's life, it happens, right? She's still family, I love her to death, no matter what. Everything's still good, never know what the future holds. Anything else past that statement is nobody else's business. Definitely try Pally with that baby, and here's- A little TikTok creator fun CPMs is not that high for y'all to be sitting on here talking for two minutes 
about me. You got two kids. I little I looked on your Instagram, I looked on your TikTok. It's funny that you tried to use me being a baby mama as an insult when you turned her into a baby mama your damn self. Why would I have my ex-husband on my page? I feel like nine to fives is the easy way out in a way. Cause it takes a lot to get to this point. Thinking for yourself for real, you just put you just showing up and doing what you're told to do. Yeah. Which is I feel like it's easier than creating your own path and your own wave and shit. A nine to five should only be used to fund your own business. Like, I don't think nobody you. should ever get a job and say, I'm gonna be the 10 year best employee of the year. Like nobody should ever think that because if you ever late too many times, they gonna get rid of you. They don't care what you got going on in your family. They don't care about nothing. If I'm the business and you always late and you doing this, I'm firing you. It's plain and simple. Yeah. I, don't give, I don't give a damn what you got going on because I know I got a thousand applications and they're going to grind hard because they need this money to, to fund their business or just to work here forever. So I'll tell people all the time, I'm like, bro, you can't be stuck in no nine to five. What the fuck are you even talking about? If you've never worked a regular... I don't know why the... I don't know why y'all keep acting slow. Y'all know what the hell I meant. If you don't want to be a boss, then don't be a boss. Work your job. I don't give a fuck. Okay? I don't care, bro. I don't even know you niggas. I don't give a fuck if you... Will. Happy birthday! Yeah, nope. I said, let me reiterate this. This has been planned before anything that y'all see, drama related or anything. Oh, you said what? Hallie is already famous as shit and doesn't really need to do the internet antics that DDG has to do, right? I'm not gonna be one of those people and just say, Doodoo Garbage ain't successful in his own way. He's very successful on YouTube. He has had a TikTok song or two. Not gonna hold that from him, but like realistically, that is the Little Mermaid, the Black Little Mermaid. She don't need to do too much, right? Her baby don't need to be pimped out online. DDG though, all I'm seeing is live streams. Hi, wanted the post breakup. I wanted to have a baby shower vlog. I wanted to do a gender reveal video, but you know why I'm kind of jealous because we never did a gender reveal. Nobody knows this, but we didn't do a gender reveal. I really wanted to do this so bad. I literally just, she just straight up told me. No, the doctor told her, and then she told me. I'm like, damn, I kind of want, you know what I'm saying? But she just straight up told Bro, that shit is just weird. At the end of the day, I do not think Hallie wanted to share that baby with the world. Like, especially if you look at the IG photo that she posted post-breakup, the only thing she's done post-breakup, unlike internet savage DDG, <laughs> Um, baby ha Halo's face is covered. Because if you think about it, all of Hallie's attempts at privacy were constantly shattered by this man. I'm talking even the, the pregnancy when he got her on the live stream walking around. Kevin, you gotta hold me. One of my friends, you tried to hold me. I just hope that DDG realizes not posting your kid online does not make you a bad parent. Like you, you could still have, be a good parent, take care of your kid and stuff, and do YouTube without having their face plastered all over, making them Instagram pages before they're even old enough to read, like, chill. And then don't even get me started. The real reason why I even wanted to keep talking about DDG right now is because I saw that video of him live streaming his life and when he ran into that bachelorette party. I'm gonna just show y'all the video and I'll be back with the commentary, girl. Watch this. I say you from all the way across the way, shorty. Hey, 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 you know, my God, you gonna cross me? It's this is crazy. I promise I ain't trying to get straight. How you doing? Okay, okay, okay. She married. Look, look, look. Y'all can't count that one. She married. Y'all can't count that. Y'all can't count that. That's what I am. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. She married. You can't do much. Y'all can't count that. Thank you. She married. Thank you so much. That's nice. That's lit. Congrats. That's nice. That's a good question. Why didn't make Holly a Why didn't make Holly a Why didn't make Holly a Hey, hey, speed it up. Yo, yo, manage your fucking business. Get the fuck away from me. This is not shady room comment. Get the fuck away from me. This is shady room. That's the fucking shady room. Get the fuck away from me. She's clear for 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 me. Get the fuck away from me. I'm tired of being on that fucking Instagram, bro. I don't want to be on that Instagram no more. Oh, they go click. Oh, they go click. Oh. Like, I'm sorry. 
I went through the comments of that video and they're all scorching the bachelorette party. I just don't feel like that's deserved. I feel like that was a valid question. They're fans of you and your BM. That is your baby mama. You did not marry her. And quite as it's kept, I talked about this with my husband on our pod too. Like you would be benefiting more by marrying her than she would be by you. By with her, that would be a completely like love, marriage, for real, unifying family. But like that would be more of a security blanket for you than her. Where if in his past relationships, I'm sure it would have been more beneficial for the woman involved. That's not the case here. You got commitment issues. Y'all probably got into this relationship too fast. Did this shit too, you know. He even admitted himself that shit was not supposed to happen. This whole clout demon shit. You beefing with random women on TikTok. Like, give yourself some time to breathe. Get offline. H figure out how you're about to do this co-parenting thing. Which is crazy. No judgment. I just really feel bad for Hallie for real. Because I know she didn't imagine herself being a single parent. Because even even though they probably do co-parenting she's still a single parent now you're still now you're a single dad like nobody wanted that for anybody you know? but yeah ddg has a lot of growing up to do over here trying to shame people for being single parents when he's one himself so i don't know girl okay so speaking of kids and online and stuff let's talk about ryan's world so if y'all remember or don't remember ryan's world is was a review channel with kids toys right with little ryan as the star well ryan is grown now and people are noticing like not to be weird so please don't think i'm coming from this angle but people are noticing puberty is hitting ryan i.e when you hit puberty you care less about what your parents think and more about your peers so you're more socially driven obviously uh females and males have different coming of age things so the one thing they're saying about ryan is that his voice is getting deeper um, and all this stuff, right? And it's becoming a little, I don't want to say uncanny valley because Ryan is a human being and he looks human, like by definition of uncanny valley. Let's just say it's just unsettling to see somebody who is being, like think about, I know this girl, I'm not trying to get extreme. Think Gypsy Rose. Like wasn't that unsettling to see like an adult in like a little mermaid, right? Like it's giving that. Like he, I know he don't want to do that no more. And so a lot of people were talking about how Ryan might feel and because of that Ryan and his parents actually went on a podcast to talk about it and it kind of just did more bad than good with the public. You're on track to be a teenage billionaire. How much does Ryan get to keep up all this? Oh be careful Ryan. <laughs> People recognize me like hey you're Ryan. I just realized that you're famous. What's been the biggest sponsorship that you've said no to? Millions of dollars. It's an extra bridal. I wonder what's inside it. I'm so excited. It's Hot Wheels Mystery Model. Like, Ryan, are you going to keep making YouTube videos, giving your interest to be an animator and maybe go behind the camera like as you get older? I think I will keep going for a while. Ryan, did you ever want to be like spend more time making the videos? Because I remember being a kid, I was like, oh my God, like maybe because I was growing up in the Midwest, I was like Hollywood movies. Like I, I, I want to see what that's all about, even though I had no idea. Like, did you ever tell your parents like, no, no, I want to be in more videos. I want to do more. I think when I was a kid, uh, I had lots of fun doing the videos like with my sisters and with my parents because like it's just really engaging and fun for me. And I loved like making the videos because I got to like play with the toys and talk to camera, play with my sisters. It's just really fun throughout the whole video. The boy that once illuminated his face now appears to be a practiced routine. When asked about his favorite part of making a movie, Ryan's response was less than enthusiastic. Ryan, what was your favorite part of doing the movie? Very hey, good. Uh, it was awesome seeing my sisters act in the movie. It was just really cool. At 13, one would expect a young actor to revel in the excitement of filmmaking. Yet Ryan's lack of enthusiasm speaks volumes about his true sentiments toward the projects he's involved in. Hey guys, today we're doing the Superhero Hobby video. Superhero! Let's do it! Let's go. Audience, Ryan might have a pretty tough time maneuvering through his teenage years. He could have a harder time finding himself, it could even lead to potential bullying, and it would probably be the best if they diverse the content into something different. Another huge surprise that was in this interview is that Ryan's parents want him to go to college. We have expressed that that's the goal that we want for him is to attend college. Yeah, ultimately so, he decides. Yeah, and we yeah. never really push him to do anything right, that he doesn't want to do. But, you know, we think it's a great opportunity for him to go to college and just meet with his peers who have the same interest. We want him to experience that. So, you know, we continue just kind of showing him that side of the good side of the going to college, the continuing education. But, you know, ultimately you decide. My thing is, does Ryan not have enough money saved? Do y'all not have enough money? Of Ryan's money saved because they've been top paid YouTube channel for what like four or five years now like do y'all not have enough bread why does he need to keep doing this and he's not even reviewing toys anymore now he's doing like this weird I can't describe it like 
I just can only call it like Adult Swim, Tim and Eric awesome show looking, uh, McDonald's from the 90s ass looking shit. Like it low-key looks like Friday at Freddy, like a fever dream. Like why do you, and the parents look so much more into it than Ryan does. And Ryan even said on the pod like, you know, yeah, I get my, some of my friends like videos, but like not really like, and if they were to ask me, I would just give them tips. It's giving... They don't even want to be fucked with Ryan on that type of time. And Ryan wants to be known for more things than that. And the parents talk about taking him to college and shit. But, like, I don't know. And then they're already grooming the sisters. He has twin little sisters to do stuff. I don't like it, y'all. I'm not a fan. I don't like it. Free Ryan. Like, I don't <laughs> and I don't like to be one of those people that just, like, bitch and moan with no solution. Like, why don't you have Ryan do age-appropriate stuff on his channel so the people that watched him in the beginning can grow with him and, you know, you can have, like, a feed-and-take thing here, right? A give-and-take thing. Like, why don't you have him do, like, uh, drone camera reviews, uh, review Polaroids, VHS, uh, dummy phones are really popular. Smartphones, now there's dumb phones. Have him review some of those like the new razors that came out you could have him review backpacks my little sister is around ryan's age and it was like this backpack this nike backpack was like all the rage like have them review backpacks shoes skateboards walkie talkies like things that a tween would like not no damn scare tactics bitch and now he's older so Lately, our focus shifted from toys to gaming. So we partner with Nintendo, we partner with AMD, um, we, only because we think it's the right, kind of, um, right moment for Ryan. The next day. 1,998, 999,999, 1 million. Morning workout, come. I just got here and I was about to play with a girl. Has anyone seen a girl? Man, when we play hide and seek, a girl is a master of disguise. What is this? A red Titan comic book and full length pages? You know what that means of the security so that the Red Titan comic book stops falling into the- and Everybody's always bitching about how there's no tween market for their kids. Like, that could have been it, but they're so focused on infantilizing Ryan. Like, what are y'all keeping him young for? It's a little scary at this point. So now I want to know, this is one of those topics that I was like, girl, it's a week late, but I still got questions. Um, why is everybody lying about the crumble cookie? Why is everybody lying? Like, okay, let's keep it a bean. If you've actually eaten it, there's one flavor that's good, and it's the Fruity Pebbles, because it tastes like how a sugar cookie's supposed to taste, and then sh sugar and Fruity Pebbles, right? The rest of them taste like egg yolk. I'm concerned. Like, why does it taste like egg yolk? Mm. Lay! <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. Oh. I might as well hang this up. But don't it crumble these cookies up. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like the texture. I don't like the That's it. That shut up. Uh uh. Take off the menu immediately. I give it a 7 out of 10. And you're dumb as fuck, always and forever. Insomnia cookies are way better, um, especially the vegan ones. Super good. They taste like sugar on your teeth afterwards, too. Like, I only tried it maybe twice just so I can get variety of the flavors because I was like, maybe it's the flavors I got, but no, it just constantly tasted like egg. So then when I saw that there was that crumble cookie craze in Australia where somebody like smuggled in the freaking crumble cookie. Y'all know that's like how COVID happened. Like, girl, I was like in disbelief that people were going that hard over them damn cookies. Hundreds queued at a North Bondark pop-up event on the weekend, excited to sink their teeth into a cookie from America's fastest growing chain of dessert shops. Crumble, an army of sugar hungry fans waited for more than an hour for the event hosted by Crumble Sydney. Made it. Arriving at the pop-up window, a trophy shop next door to a petrol station full of Crumble's signature pink packaging. There, fans found the cookie, which cost about seven Aussie dollars in the States, selling for $17.50. $17.50. $17 $17.50. Still, they persevered. Oh my God. Something wasn't quite right. That is disgusting. A cookie famous for its rich and gooey freshness, anything but. Hey, baby. 
That didn't taste like much to me. I'm kind of disappointed. I'm up well. Things were unraveling, and when Crumble HQ in America caught wind, the jig was up. We are only in the US and Canada as of now. But Crumble Sydney hit back, outlining the expenses involved to bring the US cookies to Australian fans. We never claimed to be an official Crumble store. But they came with a box and everything. So did they unpack all the cookies, flat pack the box, or did they load up the suitcases with them in the box? I'm so confused. So now I'm going to talk about something a little bit more serious. Some of you may or may not know the story of the Menendez brothers, but Netflix is about to start either a new series or a movie. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it's a series because there's so much going on with this case. They're willing to reopen the case due to new evidence now. So this is insane. One of the trials that captured the nation's attention. And now the Menendez brothers murder trial is being reevaluated. New information that backs up their testimony about an abusive father and acting in self-defense now being brought to light. The future of the Menendez brothers, charged in the infamous murders of both their parents, now possibly up in the air after Los Angeles' DA says his office is reopening up their case. Their lawyer telling reporters he is optimistic. I, I'm more than optimistic. I think they should be out. I think they should be out uh, yesterday. Los Angeles County District Attorney George Gascon says his office is reviewing petitions that point to new information and urge the release of Lyle and Eric from prison or seek a new trial. We're not saying that there was anything wrong with the original trial. We have been given evidence. The brothers were charged and convicted with brutally murdering their parents in Beverly Hills 35 years ago. What's the problem? The entire saga playing out in a new Ryan Murphy Netflix show. Brothers maintained in their defense that their father, Jose, threatened their lives and say they were acting in self-defense. Now they say they have evidence to support their claims of abuse, which are described in a letter to a cousin eight months before their parents' murders. None of this information has been confirmed, but we're here to tell you that we have a moral and an ethical obligation to review what is being presented to us. This case always stuck with me because I remember seeing it when I was like in high school, really, like on like a documentary and how like their family's been fighting to get them out this whole time. And just like somebody who also went through SA as a kid, like I just believed them instantly when they started crying and talking about like what their dad made them do and stuff. Like I was like, wow, I believe them. I believe them, and this isn't right. Murder isn't right. On some Gypsy Rose-ish. Can't believe this girl getting brought up twice in the video. As 24 members of the extended Menendez family called on Eric and Lyle to be set free, this uncle says keep the brothers locked up forever. Milton Anderson, whose sister Kitty Menendez was slain, has especially strong words for his other sister, 92-year-old Joan. My sister Joan, who is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a family turncoat. And I, I didn't realize how close she was with the Menendez brothers. The truth is, Lyle and Eric were failed by the very people who should have protected them. Moments after yesterday's press conference came to an end, Joan and family met with the DA's office for two hours. Joan, are you happy with the way the meeting went? Now Milton Anderson's lawyer is requesting a meeting with the L.A. District Attorney's Office to hear him out. There's a huge showing of unity mm -hmm. in the family to release the Menendez brothers. But your client says no way. This was a really incredibly brutal murder where both of the parents had multiple shotgun wounds and he believes that the sentence was appropriate. The brothers gunned down their parents as they watched television in their Beverly Hills mansion in 1989, a brutality depicted in the new Netflix hit series. My sister was still moving so they pumped more, more shots into her. Eric and Lyle claim they committed the slayings to stop their father's relentless sexual abuse. Prosecutors argued they did it to inherit their $14 million family fortune. Murder isn't right to get away from your problems, right? Like, but unlike Gypsy Rose, I know Gypsy was under the impression that her mother had the, the police fooled. Like, no, the Menendez brothers' parents genuinely were pillars in that community like the police was on their side for sure the fact that they're reopening it is a big deal and from what i've heard they've some one of them's married like they're really tried to keep going on with their lives like they have degrees i don't know it's just a mess bro it just makes me feel really bad because i really don't think that um i feel like that case should have been handled differently like they shouldn't have been sent to prison they should have been sent somewhere else and i feel like there is immediate mediator place where we should be sending people not just a loony bin or um what's it called prison like there has to be some form of rehabilitation right some other form but obviously we haven't cracked that code yet here in america but for some reason i feel like in other countries they probably have now i'm going to talk about elon musk and his creepy ass robots i robot things that he's introduced to the world everything we've developed for our cars the batteries, power electronics, uh, the advanced motors, gearboxes, the, the software, the, uh, the AI inference computer, it all actually applies to a humanoid robot. It's the same techniques. It's just a robot with arms and legs instead of a robot with, with wheels. And uh, we've made a lot of progress with the Optimus. 
And uh, as you can see, we, we started up with someone um, in a robot suit, uh, sort of down. And then we've progressed tr dramatically year after year. So if you extrapolate this, you're really going to have something spectacular, something that anyone could own. But fundamentally, at scale, at the Optimus robot, you should be able to, to buy an Optimus robot for, I think, probably twenty to $30,000 long term. So, and, and, and what can it do? It can, it'll be able to do anything you want. So it can um, be a teacher, babysit your kids, it can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get the groceries, just be your friend, serve drinks. Um, whatever you can think of, it will do. And yeah, it's going to be awesome. And I, I think this will be the biggest product ever of any kind. The director of the film iRobot is mocking Elon Musk for ripping off the movie's designs for Tesla's new robot dubbed Optimus, RoboTaxi, and Robovan. He on social media called out the uncanny resemblance that all three of Tesla's planned robot offerings have to similar products in iRobot, which is set in 2035 Chicago. iRobot director Alex Proyas even weighed in on Sunday, posting on X, formerly Twitter, Hey Elon, can I have my designs back please? And filmmaker Matt Granger, who worked as an assistant to Proyas on iRobot, posted in a seemingly now deleted tweet, I too wish to offer my full fingered you to Elon and his utter lack of creativity. For one, again, did you not see the movie iRobot? And the fact that that dude is trying to sue you does not surprise me because at first I thought it was just the robot. I didn't realize that this man, this man also was stealing the Cybertruck. Like the Cybertruck low-key looks like his stuff also. Bro's a thief. The memes are funny. The memes are funny. I'll give y'all that. The memes are funny, especially the one where they was like, my Tesla robot looking at me when I tell him he about to go and work this uh the shift. <laughs> Let me see you that don't know elon will have like a good idea and then he'll pay somebody to go and build it or like make it or do a prototype or whatever and then if it's is like fits to the standard that's why i feel like a lot of these people be coming to the u.s to do shit because the u.s is like infamous for pushing shit a little bit to get to the standard when the standard is the bare minimum like look at our food that's approved by the fda it's seen as cancerous in other countries like he once he gets the green light then he just mass produces them next thing you know you got a fucking tesla robot at the winn -Dixie. <laughs> tesla robot at the Dwayne reed bitch <laughs> getting your tampons and waxing somebody's box i saw somebody was like thirty thousand dollars it better have a tesla bussy on there a robe bussy <laughs> my thing is elon what's gonna stop this thing from blowing up he over here talking about oh yeah it could babysit it a child? A living child? <laughs> what if it just blows up in the baby face? Tesla is investigating this fiery explosion in Shanghai. It appears to show a Model S bursting into flames. ...at a dealership today in Fort Lauderdale. It happened after a Tesla caught on fire, who's been stuck with a fiery mess after his car caught fire not once, but twice on the same day. Take a look. It happened in Los Gatos yesterday. The owner of that Tesla Model S was driving when he got a flat tire. His car was towed to a shop where it then burst into flames. Firefighters put out that fire. How grateful he is to have been alone in the car without his children inside. As Bishal Mala stood alongside firefighters, he was at a loss for words. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm just speechless. What happened to a Tesla in Florida during last week's hurricane? See? It burst into flames. Uh -uh. The fire spread to the home and burned it down. What? No robust for you. 
my thing is you horny ass humans y'all could already go and get something similar why do y'all want to just stick your body parts into everything like stop it these last three topics are going to be pretty niched um because it's like you're either gonna watch these shows know these people or you're not so i don't blame any of you guys if you tap out right here please make sure you like on the way out <laughs> so if you know you know um, but I want to talk about this whole Nicki Minaj and Armand Wiggins shit. I can't believe I'm saying that. Armand Wiggins. It's Armand Wiggins. Armand Wiggins. <laughs> I'm sorry, but when he dropped that Kiki Palmer shit, I was like, he's a freaking fool for that. So, what happened? I'm going to break it down for as much as I know. Because what I really want to talk about is how he was acting in this damn clubhouse, girl. Like, we gotta get into that. And then I got so much secondhand Gemini embarrassment. Like, I can't even, I cannot, like, oh my God. So boom, it all started when uh, Armand got spotted at a Nicki show. He got spotted at a Nicki Minaj concert. If y'all don't know who Armand is, basically he does, he actually spills tea breaks news like how i was telling y'all at the beginning of this video i don't do like if you come on here and you hear it it's been out bitch like i don't break news bitch i already got a a cease and desist from one person who thought i was a breaking news ass bitch and they learned real quick i'm not her so <laughs> so armand got spotted at a nikki concert which is i mean a grown-ass man or a grown-ass adult can do whatever the fuck they want with their money right but the thing is is that this person armand has been very very vocal about how he is anti Kenneth Petty he's and he's pro Cardi B he um if I'm not mistaken because this is when I stopped fucking with Armand's content and I'm sorry Armand I don't know you as a person but I'm just letting you know when I personally stopped watching was when he was talking about Nicki Minaj um I don't remember what event it was but she was wearing like a bustier and I'm pretty sure she was either had just given birth or was breastfeeding something but she had just had her child. And mind you, I'm sorry y'all, I'm not a barb. So even though some things I might say you might agree with, I'm about to be so real with you, I'm not a barb. Not a barb, okay? I'm a fan that is a disappointed fan to the point where I don't even have Nicki Minaj music on my phone. Like I'm very mindful with what I do with my money. I don't um, go out of my way to troll Nicki Minaj because I do like her like as the legend she is. I have respect for her in that right. I, I grew up, I was 13 years old, bumping itty bitty piggy bitch. Like, so I get Armand from that angle. However, as an adult that's making grown bitch money with a grown bitch frontal cortex fully developed, I cannot support Kenneth Petty. So I will not be streaming the music and I will not be going to the shows. And I thought that he was on that page too. And then he pop up at the fucking show. He did get confronted by Nikki on Clubhouse, which is fucking insane. Like, bro, how do you even know how to get there? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, bro was really acting like he didn't fuck with this lady. Cause I just, I'm just saying, like, as a Gemini, it's my pet fucking peeve when I meet another Gemini that plays both sides because you are the fucking stereotype. Oh my god, bitch, you are the stereotype. What he said about Nikki was he kept calling her arms. And I remember Cardi even using that term too, calling her arms after Armand was calling her arms. Nicki Minaj is getting very round. So let's not do that because Cardi B's face is creeping up on the girls. Cardi B's face card is spending. Woman has continuously, since having me blocked, you might as well unblock me at this point, Nicki. You might as well unblock me because you continue to respond. You've done it with the Saucy Santana. You've done it with numerous things. You've done it, you've just done it, you've done it, you've done it. You've done it. Now, you called me Gumby. If it's one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to prove a stupid, stu prove stupid people wrong. You're not proving me wrong by being insecure about your big old ditties, your big old biggies. You might have big chest here. This is still fat. This is still round. It's no shade. You showing me your lipo stomach does not mean that you don't need, that you're not heavy on the top. And listen, we all have a little extra weight here and there. So I don't know. You, you, you looked, though, that was not a, a well-fitting outfit on you. It was not flattering. It is what it is. You feel some type of way about that. There was no angle in the world that made that look flattering. Period. Here's the reason why that you're online still talking about it. And then your fan base is not going to tell you that, but they know that that shit was not flattering either. Gets clocked at the Nikki show. 
a lot of barbs were coming out in the beginning it was just like oh okay ha ha he he but then it was like no bitch for real like you were talking that cash shit talking about this woman's body right after she gave birth you over here talking about uh how you don't support the relationship which a lot of us don't but it's the fact that you're not standing on business buddy you're not standing on business you're flip-flopping too many of y'all want to be the celebrities you talk about and secretly want to be around them and in their spaces via your drama tea spilling content bitch i'm in my bathroom in a fucking pajama set off amazon putting spider webs on my face I'm not thinking about um <laughs> um getting sushi with Nicki Minaj like I'm really not like I I'm maybe I need to dream bigger I don't know but I just don't bitch like <laughs> just because you make it into the same room as people due to the machine because part of the machine is technically you are like a tabloid like a news thing right and it's a give and take we you help creators by um talking about them musicians artists whatever by talking about them and they benefit by being talked about because it brings you know publicity so you're part of the machine so yeah you guys are gonna have to be in the same room um same rooms but it does not mean that you are entitled to a relationship or uh being cordial even which is really ironic because i saw one of his videos came on my page the other day about him saying jason lee was doing the same thing that he just did with nikki on the thing and y'all when i tell y'all that was the most painful 25 minutes bro so, like you probably see me through the internet or whatever but i really am a big fan i'm not really i'm just really up here to ask what can i do to get unblocked on instagram seeing you in person i'm blocked you on instagram me. but i will never follow you um and, and i'm okay no. with that good you well, i do have one thing here's the other thing about that okay um if she did something to you while you were talking shit about me and my family it's good for you that's good for you, okay? Don't ever play. And if she say she did something to you, but then you have to tell you. Get up. Absolutely not, but well, listen, no, I'm gonna be cool because you're right. This is your kingdom, but hey, no, none of she did work. <laughs> She's out of her mind. I laughed at that, but she just got up here and tried to play in your face. I'm like, girl, you're a liar. Life coach is crazy. And then she's going to talk about she believes in God. No, you do not. You believe in the underworld, girl, and you're witch. But at the end of the day, listen, I don't really want to make it about her. I got to go. Thank you, Nikki, so much. I'm not going to argue with this witch. One thing I love about Armand is that he speaks very ill of you and your family. But first of all, we're not going to sit up here and gaslight it like I just go in and discuss people's family. Because that's not what I do. I've never sit up there and bath your family. Okay. So what I have to say, so, okay, so what I do have to say, though, in all honesty, just with me, and this is what I've said on my platform many times. I made a lot of mistakes trying to build a brand. And, you know, and as I got older, I realized you can't be chasing this. I felt like at one point I was chasing like celebrity recognition, Hollywood, that, and I realized that that's not really real. And you have to be supportive and loyal to the people that are supportive and loyal to you. So I did go through growing pains. I did. I did do trial and error. I, I did that. So I'm totally accountable for that. And like I said, like, I apologize to you for that. I want to chase a name. But I realized that is really empty. That means nothing, you know, even with seeing you in, in the LA show. I was so flustered because I'm like, I want to take the photo, but my biggest regret was having the phone up. Cause I'm like, damn, I don't want the woman to think, I just want to put a camera in her face. But I'm like, mm -hmm. this moment I need to be able to see. So for me, I will take accountability because as I was growing up, I've been doing this for like seven, eight years. And I was, mm -hmm. I, it was fun at first and I didn't know which way to go. So I was just mm -hmm. doing shit that I thought that would get we'll me get where I need to go. And I, yeah, and also, then I realized so, you know that right. doesn't so here's, work. here's the thing, I'm on, listen, listen. I remember seeing, something and once i see one disgusting thing said once i see someone say something i just unfollow block because see if the person well, is giving, you, if, if a person is giving negativity in any way i erase them so i erased you i i remember you you, you saying nasty so, something something nasty and um, it was a tarot that was that. reading but huh it was a tarot reading so i know you're a witches that's why you're following me i did a tarot reading no, you. that's not, I've, I've never seen you do no tarot reading. I want y'all to stop telling me why I okay. unfollowed y'all. Just simply ask me and I will let you know. I, okay, I well, heard that's what I thought it was. Shit, some nasty shit. And so I said, okay, that's that. I'm glad to, to know okay. that it wasn't the, the tarot reading because I don't know what I said, but I apologize if it pissed you off because the whole time you, you, I was you, up listen, in, you, I was up you, you, you spoke on something. That, and I was so you mad about that. I was really you mad. You spoke on something and you was out of line and you kept speaking and you kept speaking and you kept speaking. Okay, let me tell you something. The day I decide to only do talk show or podcast, hunty, 
Y'all are going to run from the motherfucking hills. So I would advise you, because I didn't even think this was the real you. I thought this was one of my fans playing. Cool, no, I'm here What's for so you to do the media. You are you are up next with that. But can I just be honest? This is where my entitlement fucked me up, and I'm going to be real. And, I, and I'll be finally done. My entitlement did fuck me up with that because the whole time I was thinking it was a terror reading. And my entitlement, I was messaging you back in 2018. I was like, because that's when you follow me. So I was like, oh, Nikki, you know, like, whatever. What can I do to get on Queen Radio? Do I need to have more followers? How can I work? I want to just do whatever I can do. And then you didn't respond to that. I said, I never saw that. And then you, un then you unfollowed me. So my no, thing I was, unfollowed you because you was talking shit. But let me say something. Good but that was my you. I'm glad I, I, didn't, I didn't respond. But, I, but I'm going to tell you the truth because I ain't going to reason a lot. I never saw that. I never saw that. Never, ever. And so that's where so it fucked me again, up. I got entitled and felt like, girl, she didn't see the positive, but she only saw the negative. So then I went on my rant. That was me. I fucked up. It was bad. But I learned from that. So it is what it okay, is. Good. I mean, can't then follow along. Okay. okay. Sometimes we're going to be talking about a couple years ago, something like we about today. Don't waste my motherfucking time, nigga. Now, what I was saying is, um, if you sit up there with motherfucking tarot cards, calling somebody a motherfucking witch, what the fuck is, what is happening here? Oh, I'm unblocked. I'm so excited. Okay, girl, so now I'm done. I got my unblock. Period. Oh. Okay, good, good night. Get off my get, you know, you ain't, <laughs> no. you ain't, let me tell you, you still let me, let me let you know something, sir. Let me let you know. And, and this is a very, this is, this is now I'm being serious. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to cut the act. Um, you are still on my shit list. I don't want you to get it confused. Okay. Well, how long is that? I, but, but hold on, don't, 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 don't ever interrupt me ever again uh, in life, okay. sir. Okay. I've never had an enemy that I didn't end up feeling sorry for. Mm, mm, mm. So when a person speaks on a person's family without knowing what's going on or posting things on their blogs, I went through every last one of y'all and surprise, surprise, all of y'all have been waiting online to meet me at some point. All of y'all have had taken a picture with me at some point. Every single one of us has gotten caught up at one point or the other in our lives, where we look at, we look back and say, my God, I can't believe I said this. I can't believe I did that. But you will always be on my shit list. There are mm. a few people, there are a few people. This is two grown ass people. This is a grown ass man getting like put in his fucking place by Nicki Minaj and some other random person. It was giving schoolyard antics because it's like he didn't, all I can say is Armand did not stand on business. And some people may say like, oh, he took accountability. Girl, that shit was not genuine. He even a kiki and cackled like a little kid on the schoolyard and was like, well, at least I'm mine blocked now. Y'all, oh my gosh, that was insane. And I'm not gonna hold you. I love reading celebrity memoirs. So I'm not even gonna act like I don't have interest in Hollywood, old Hollywood, documentaries, um, biopics. Like I do have interest in that. However, my interest doesn't go so far as to where I want to be at the Diddy party. You get what I'm saying? Like on some uh, Hollywood Unlocked. Like I am so good on that. I value having my soul, my likeness, my dignity, baby. Like I'm good on that. Oh, but, and then, and then in that live stream, what else was crazy is that you got Armand in here talking about some, calling somebody a witch or something. But then when he was over here like, oh, I know why you're mad at me. It's because I did a tarot reading. Armand, have you lost your damn mind? You over here doing tarot readings on some... Girl, my name is the Voodoo Child and I have not done no reading on nobody. Like, what? Like, that's like the level of when people be trying to, like, uh, talk to, to take off from the beyond or, or Prince or Michael Jackson. Like, why are you putting out hearsay into the world? I never thought I would be on Nicki Minaj's side on something in the 2020s because when I tell y'all, I have been so disappointed as a fan, like, and I hope the barbs don't eat me up too bad in the comments, but I mean, it just is what it is. And the craziest thing about it, after all of that, Nicki still said, oh, and by the way, I'm never gonna fuck with you. You're still on my shit list. No, what was really the key is when he said, oh, when I was talking shit about you, my whole MO was, um, just trying to go viral, talking my shit, blah, 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 blah. I had to really grow into my person. And I used to want to be, like I said, he said, I used to want to be in those places with uh, certain people. At first, I was trying to get celebrity validation and, and, you know, be in people DMs and stuff and try to be their friend. And now I know better. I'm not trying to still get it. But I'm like, bro, this whole live stream, you're trying to get validation from Nicki Minaj, somebody who you know's husband is a sex offender, who you said all this shit about. Like, 
I guess what really kills me in my Gemini senses is like, bitch, you know better. And you didn't stand on business. And I'm sorry, but like, I have gay guy friends. I have gay guy supporters. And I know y'all are real, so you'll admit that this happens within the community, within the LGBTQ plus A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G community. Okay, and if someone has a bi girl, I'm gonna just say it how it is. Some of these gay dudes are very anti-woman and they don't realize it. They're also misogynistic and they don't realize it. Some of them are even homophobic and don't realize it. Anti-feminine, don't realize it, right? And sometimes our mom would say little shit and I'll be like, bro, I don't like that. Like, I don't like that. OG, let me get you together. Bitch, you ugly, period. I don't care. When I look at OG, it is not pleasing to my eyes. U G L Y, you ain't got no holiday. You're built a little stronger than certain people at certain people like. I don't like her. She not attracted to me. And you got blonde. Bitch, you is fucking ugly. Me being gay don't have nothing to do with it. If I was reading her, if I was doing that, I probably would have said a monkey too because you know she do look like a monkey. Me being gay don't have nothing to do with it. You are passive, aggressive, aggressive, passive. Or maybe you're just a little bit more aggressive. Don't feel bad. I said what I said. I don't think she's attractive to me. I wouldn't date her. I don't like her. That's the main girl for your guys. Bitch, you is fucking ugly. But she's not cute to me. It is what it is. So fight me. Me being gay don't have nothing to do with it. And so there's so many people online on subscribe and I'm doing this with you. Don't announce it. Just did say as a positive before I get off the subject is uh beauty is in the eye of the beholder success is in the eye of the beholder your version of success is not the same as someone else so if Armand feels satisfied by getting unblocked by Nikki and getting to talk to her um on clubhouse and he views that as a win then let him have that win Okay, so now I'm going to talk about power. So power finally ended and before it ended, I actually went on Hulu and watched the whole thing all over again, right? And honestly, girl, I realized like how cringy the 2010s were. <laughs> that show was low-key a soap opera for real and I'm kind of glad that it's over. So for one, re-watching it, Angela and Ghost's relationship was so fucking cringy and I, the whole time I was watching it I was like were people watching this in real time being like aw because I wanted them both to die like it was just so unnecessary I don't know if it was because it was like back in the day and it's like oh we're on HBO like we could fuck like let's just go overboard with fucking like it was just so unnecessary and there was a lot of the times where I was like girl can we get to the plot can we get to the story like what are we doing I don't care about this hetero sex scene it was definitely extra. It's got so much freaking secondhand embarrassment. I can't even. And then Tariq asked, I remember watching it the first go round and Tariq actually pissing me off, but watching it this go round, I actually empathized for Tariq a little bit more and seeing his perspective because Ghost did lie to him and say like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make sure you don't go to jail. And then out of nowhere was like, actually, you going to jail is the best thing for everybody. What the fuck? You said I was out of jail. And then if we keep, if we keep it in the bean, Tariq, the only thing where Tariq got on my fucking nerves was the scene where Raina's funeral, he should not have hit up Dre and stopped that. Like, I wish Dre would have just died then and there. That would have been just best for everybody, bitch. Then, with the newer seasons and shit, like, why didn't y'all bring, um, Proctor's daughter back? Because I saw they did that little Kill Bill exposition with her and Tommy on some, 
if you ever want to see me when you get older, come and hit me up. Y'all should have had her come back like a bad bitch, like a bad Italian mafia baby. What are you talking about? That would have been fire, but they didn't do it. And then I thought that Effie was an orphan. Where did this white mama come from? I thought she was an orphan and like, turns out she, she said she ran away because she was getting touched on. Like, damn Effie, are we going to get, um raising effie next like what the fuck was that about that was just sad for no fucking reason <laughs> so my last topic is gonna be another show it's going to be hold on let me put this down it's gonna be love after lockup life after lockup i'm just gonna talk about a few couples before i go okay i'm actively watching this show right now i'm gonna start off with um let's start off with the girl who got the settlement who's also dating someone named daniel <laughs> because this girl is just not smart in my opinion and all of the women or the people that are not the convicts are just as manipulative as the people going in because i've noticed the pattern all the women want a man that is in one place that they know where he's at only talking to her that's what they want at least in prison they could do the illusion of like i'm just talking to her and talk to other bitches but it's real hard to do when they're on the outside and i noticed that's where a lot of the problems stem right baby that's dating mr daniel gets on my nerves because daniel is an alcoholic or um an addict and alcohol is his trigger and his family his brothers his friends everybody is telling this girl how serious it is and she's just like well i like to drink so well, I'm just going to have a little mimosa. I'm going to just have a little uh, margarita. It's not going to hurt nobody. If I go out with my friends, I'm going to have a glass of wine. I don't have a drinking problem, though. I don't have a drinking problem, though. I would just have a glass of wine laying in the house when he gets home, though. And it's like, girl, do you have a you have a drinking problem? If he can relapse in like a controlled setting, like a prison, does that like, concern you that he'll relapse without being in prison? Really just not worried about him relapsing. Mm. Well, I think he's on like a good track. I, I mean, I don't, I don't think you should drink at all, but if you are, at least don't do it around him, I ask, you know? Um, Okay, just like leave me alone. Drinking, baby? Stop, don't put me on the spot here. Part of the reason he got incarcerated was from drinking. Well, Sorry. That's bull. But yeah. she told me she wasn't gonna drink. And I can drink if I wanna drink. Clearly. Clearly. It's just annoying. Well, I'm triggered. I want a shot. How do you feel about that? Take a shot. Yeah. You look wrong, and it's it's that's a trigger to me. I didn't think it'd be a trigger, but that's a trigger to me. Are you serious? I see it now. Yeah, that's a trigger. It bothers you that much? That's gonna be something we gotta talk about. You don't, you don't want, you don't want, you want to kiss me? I can taste. Kiss me. Babe, I can. Do you want to kiss me? I don't want to taste alcohol. You have a drinking problem. Like, and I put my own business out there, but when me and my husband, we were dating and shit, and like, I realized, okay, I want to be serious with this person. We're about to live together. I quit smoking. He could not smoke weed no more. He was on probation. So I quit smoking weed. I didn't smoke weed for like four or five years. Like, bitch. <laughs> all because i wanted better for this person i wanted this person in my life i wanted to live with them so i did what i had to do right to not get them in trouble to keep them in the free world <laughs> for one she got this settlement money and the settlement is sketchy she doesn't really talk about it like that she said she was in a drunk driving accident where her friend was driving and the friend died because they went on a backwards ramp at an airport and crashed into something and she got all this settlement money and she be spending it on all this dumb shit. Just from what I'm looking at from the outside, and just dumb shit. You'd be responsible for us to get some play What do you think? I wouldn't be mad if I did get pregnant. That, that is how I feel. I really don't want to take plan B. But don't you think it'd be irresponsible I mean, yeah, to do that now yeah. so quickly? No one really prepares to have kids. It just happens. I have so much hanging over my head. I owe court fines. I owe uh, fines for the crimes that I committed. And I think it would be incredibly irresponsible to have a child when I owe all these obligations to other people, to my son. Shout out to, by the way, shout out to Blood Kiss. You have sent me so many lipsticks and they still, like, they're just amazing. I hope you still sell stuff. He's very bossy of Mr. Daniel and I feel like Mr. Daniel might be relapsed right now because I'm, I'm not one of those love after lockup, life after lockup watchers that, like, go too far into the future. Like, I like to... I don't want to know what happens. I want to be surprised. <laughs> that couple where the dudes never dated black girls before and then you dating and impregnating this black person. Hear me out. I feel like there's something wrong with this lady. Again, control issues, weird. She's one of those people, one of those pick me's that like start the most randomest fucking arguments just so she can have attention from the man. She's one of those pick me's that pretends like shit does not bother her, the cool girl pick me. But then you do like this emotional outburst randomly all while saying how much you don't care um and this is a very sensitive topic miscarriage i don't believe that woman was ever pregnant 
And the reason why I don't, and I think it was for TV, is because all these people that are on these Love After Lockup, Life After Lockup shows, even 90 Day Fiance, sometimes will just get with each other just to be on the show and get some clout. Um, when she didn't go in to get the sonogram or the ultrasound, and bro was right outside, like, that was just so weird. Like, she didn't get it. It was just weird. It was just weird. I don't doubt. And then, and then once she does announce a pregnancy, she randomly has five other kids. Like, something off about that lady, bro. And I'm not saying he's an angel, but something's off about that lady. Uh, the couple with, I believe, the trans man and the redhead. I didn't really get too much into them. Uh, the only episode I saw was a recent one, which Loki pissed me off because, like, they were had to move somewhere. And they didn't tell their mama that they couldn't move until, like, it was too late. And you over here smiling my face, packing up bags and shit with me. That would have pissed me off. But my only thing I could say to them is... As long as y'all both felons, it's going to be hard. You guys need um, a cosigner. Like, you guys need a third. Not that way. You need a third that will actually um, come in and help you guys get, like, homes, cars. Because a lot of places in the South are not going to help you when it comes to that um, status that you got. The lady that was slut and bopping and hopping and dropping it low all over her small town and who, like, all her cousins done fucked this man and... And like everybody knows about this man. The man whistled at her cousin at the, the bridal shower. Like that is a mess. That is a mess. And honestly, I'm concerned. I wouldn't even went on TV. That shit is so embarrassing. I'm sorry. You over here smashing your cousin's leftovers. You were the side chick in the last relationship he was with. And you expect him to be faithful to you. Like now we're over here doing a DNA test because we think one of her kids is his because they hooked up. Should they just be hooking up with everybody in this small ass fucking town? It's insane to me. Oh, the Latino couple or the Latin couple, I think, I think, uh, with the eight, eight, 11 children, the 80,000 kids. And now she's pregnant again after the doctor told her, like, you are a high risk. Like, you can't keep popping out babies. I feel like she likes attention of being pregnant she likes the attention of being pregnant and she likes the attention of her family like her having family and it being hers and we aren't step siblings we aren't half siblings like this is my family and dude is like baby we don't gotta do that like we have the house we have the ring all the kids are here like what is it not enough and i low-key feel for him i think it's immature to be punching holes in the wall and shit like grow the fuck up you got boys in the house and little girls that don't need to be thinking that's okay. However, I agree. Like, bro, can we stop having these fucking kids? But he needs to get a fucking vasectomy. He needs to take charge because that bitch is... I'm trying to think, is there anybody else? Because they just started a new one, so I don't remember. Oh, the lady whose man has a security cameras in the house. Be like that. Because where are you been? I'm in prison. For some people... Being with someone incarcerated consists of an occasional phone call here and there, a visitation whenever you can, but we do a day in and day out. And um, she fought his mama. I get it, but at the end of the day, when Tini ain't gonna be there, I'm gonna be there. Ugh. Why do you think I wouldn't be there? You no, know I'm saying, if oh. you wouldn't. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm just hypothetically speaking. Well, to say, well, even when Tini's not there, what makes you think that I wouldn't be? I just made a comment. I can't make no comment. It ain't nothing to do Well, when it's to say a matter of time, if me, like, wait, possibly. wait, wait, get a with my son. Lil Rob, Oof. what I'm trying to say is, you just basically left us to take her a whole nother family and just... I'm gonna go over here and get a drink real quick. So why would you do that? Bye, have a good day. Why would you do that? Hey, what is your problem with hey, me, man? Hey, his mama needed her ass whooped because, bitch, you over here talking to me like a bitch on the street. You're out of here. And then you have not been supporting for a decade, and I've been supporting. My kids have been riding up there every week, and you're gonna beat my kid's mom ass in front of them like technically it was it was like half and half people was kicking and shit it was let me know what y'all think but i just don't like how he is so easily manipulated by his family i feel like they guilt trip him because he makes i think he'd be trapping still bitch i think he'd be trapping and they want some of that money because even the mom was like how dare you not take care of your mother and i'm like bitch don't you want him to be a husband and a father like and then she was like, got him taking care of your kids. And that's why, and her kids are so articulate and unfortunately way too mature for this situation. Like, they're way too involved. Like, they've been to the jail every week for years. So I get why the channel um, adds their opinion, even though they're children. But I feel for the kids when they're like, we don't want a relationship with that lady. 
Okay guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a little bit longer than I wanted, but I was feeling pretty chatty. So hopefully you guys enjoy at least one of these topics. Please go ahead and leave this video a like before you go and check out some more of my other rants, my book reviews. I got unpopular opinions, all that stuff. And uh, thank you guys so much for supporting me on my vlogs. I've been seeing y'all over there on Vlogmas. I see y'all, not Vlogmas girl. I've been seeing y'all over there for vlogs over. <laughs> Thanks so much for supporting me over there as well and on my podcast. And um, yeah, I will see you guys next time. Peace.